Good afternoon and welcome to Friday's Lunchtime News. For the man at the very top of the BBC, it was a simple question of right or wrong. And too many people at the BBC just got it wrong. After giving the top executive of the BBC a private and brutal grilling yesterday, Sir Michael Lyons went public today with all guns blazing. The Ross brand affair was totally unacceptable. You, the licence fee payer, simply deserve better. It must never happen again, he said, and day-to-day -day bosses at the Beeb need to get a grip. But most of them are still in place, and Jonathan Ross will be back, albeit a little poorer, in three months' time. Three months in which the BBC have to come up with better and more effective controls that protect you from offence, whilst not retrenching into bland programming. So it's a tall order that places the men and women who decide what you watch and listen to on the BBC in the last chance saloon. Nina Nana reports now on the chairman's challenge. Will uh, Jonathan be coming out? Uh, he tells me not. Okay. Um, I've got no reason to suggest otherwise. Is he there? <laughs> his critics say he's overexposed on the airwaves, but Jonathan Ross remained out of sight at his home today while the police negotiated the cameras. The boxes on the drive indicating that the family's Halloween party is going ahead the day after Ross's suspension for 12 weeks without pay. Never, ever, ever underestimate the tastes of the audience. Meanwhile, the resignation of his boss at Radio 2, Leslie Douglas, was inevitable after the broadcast, according to the head of the BBC Trust. Editorial procedures must be tightened, he said, but conceded that would be easier said than done. The BBC mustn't stop taking risks. This isn't a new puritanism that we're talking about, but it is a clear emphasis on proper editorial controls. And one of the things the Trust has asked the Director General to focus on, because we want to be quite surgical in the way that we deal with this, one of the things we've asked him to concentrate on are those programmes, as you say, which are predictably risky, where the performers are, you know, by definition provocative. What the Queen didn't say in her Christmas message. Mock the Week, the BBC's comedy show, is clearly one such provocative programme. But in the very week when one row was escalating, this offensive remark about the Queen was aired on the show. I've had a few medical problems this year. <laughs> I'm now so old that my <laughs> is haunted. So will you now investigate Mock the Week and other programmes well, like that? Well, uh, my understanding is that on the, on, the, on the editorial side of the BBC, that is being looked at. Could you lend Mrs Richard your assistance in connection with her reservation? The man who directed Faulty Towers and ran the BBC's light entertainment department during a more gentle era in comedy says the BBC must tread carefully. Uh, I think they've got to keep a balance. They've got to uh, keep the young audience uh, involved in television and radio. Uh, but I just think they have to be more careful about what they do transmit. But even the BBC's own stars admit that their like have too much power. I think that the point we've all learned is that I think producers have to be given uh, the power that gives them the protection to make the right decisions. And th but that's so difficult to do if you know the internal workings of, 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 of big stars and their agents. And, you know, what, ha when do you... You must absolutely tell somebody no if they're doing the wrong thing. You thought and pop them on the breast. <laughs> but as this week has proved, saying no is far from easy. Nina Nanar, ITV News. On stage, on screen... And as you can see on our screen there, in the last few minutes it's been announced that Jonathan Ross has taken the decision to step down from presenting the 2008 British Comedy Awards on ITV1. That's come from the broadcaster today. Well, joining me now to put some of this in context is a man who knows all about handling big star names and the fallout from controversies that they can provoke, PR guru Mark Bukowski. Mark, thanks very much indeed for joining us this afternoon. Let's start, if we can, with the BBC chairman. He wants tighter editorial controls, but he doesn't want bland programming. Easier said than done when you're handling big-name talent. Yeah, it, it is. It, it, it's a great soundbite. Um, what, you, what we're seeing is some very forceful words from the BBC right from the top where there should have been perhaps those words at the beginning of the week, but they're sending out the right signals. But you're right, um, a celebrity has a very big ego and occasionally they believe that they're right. That's why you need, as Chris Evans said in your clip, and he's absolutely right, equally powerful producers to talk common sense. That will need investment. I think many of the media organisations are not investing in the talent to help the talent. And that is a big issue. 
And when, as you also heard, because you were listening kindly whilst we were uh, covering the last item uh, with that breaking news from Romilly, is Jonathan Ross right to say, I can't do the Comedy Awards on the ITV, or is that a sign of retrenchment already? He, uh, he, the, the Comedy Awards are in the first week of January. He would still be under suspension from the BBC. I think there's a lot of provocation, particularly from the media, We've seen the Comedy Awards, they're vital, it's a live show, um, and clearly he doesn't want to be caught out. I think that it probably is a show too far for him during this time when he's serving, you know, he's being penitent. And we've seen some of those incredible faux pas made on that show, and it's live, and there's no getting away from it, and he might be tempted. So I right. think it's a, probably the right decision to be made. Apologise for interrupting there. Final quick thought from you, Mark, if you will. Many of these stars have their own production companies that make these programmes for the BBC or indeed for ITV. That's a real problem in editorial control, is it not? Yes and no. I think stars want to take control of their output. But going back to that original point, if you've got good people helping you produce those programmes, there's nothing wrong with that. You've just got to get the right talent working with the talent. Mark Bukowski, always good to talk to you. Thanks for joining us this afternoon.
Good afternoon and welcome to Thursday's Lunchtime News. Thousands of complaints, two shows off the air, one resignation, one suspension. Today the BBC is finally asking its management, how did we get to this point? This lunchtime, the Director General, Mark Thompson, is explaining to the BBC Trust, which is meant to look out for the interests of licence fee payers, why those answer phone messages ever made it to air. The BBC is fighting a desperate battle to contain the crisis. Russell Brand has handed in his resignation, saying the prank calls he made with Jonathan Ross were a really, really stupid thing to do. Ross's show's been pulled this week, but he's still clinging on to his £18 million deal with the broadcaster. And whilst Ross is off air, licence fee payers are contributing toward the £16,000 a day he is being paid for doing nothing. So far, it's the presenters who face the most criticism for the lewd calls. Now attention turns to the management who cleared the show for broadcast and to the bosses who were slow to apologise. Nina Nanar reports now on the crisis talks that will decide where the buck should stop. Good morning, Mr Thompson. Do you have a, a few moments for a quick word? Will there be any more resignations today, Mr Thompson? No time to talk. After being accused of reacting far too slowly to the escalating scandal, this is a BBC now in a hurry to get things sorted out. The Director General of the Corporation left home this morning for the journey to a special meeting of the group whose job it is to protect the interests of the BBC's licence fee payers. At the BBC Trust headquarters in central London, after facing questions from the waiting media, Mr Thompson was to deliver the findings of BBC management's investigation into how the offending broadcast was allowed on air. I'm just going to go into the meeting with the BBC Trust the right now, if I can get past the gentleman. The Ferrari has already claimed one victim, Russell Brand, who resigned yesterday, but also asked for Jonathan Ross to be spared the sacking that many are calling for. You know, what Jonathan did, while silly, was not malicious. He's not a malicious man, he's a family man, he's a lovely, kind gentleman that did something that was a little bit silly. It's been reported that Leslie Douglas, the controller of Radio 2, was prepared to resign if members of her production staff were sacked. But this PR expert says the BBC mismanaged the whole scandal and more heads must roll. Clearly, the media ran this story uh, and pulled the rug from underneath uh, the BBC's, you know, tiny little dainty feet. And when that happens, you are having to react to what the media are saying and not to what you should be saying. But it's been quite interesting that senior BBC officials have kept their head very, very far below the dark parapet. Ross, on a reputed £18 million contract with the BBC, has apologised, but his Friday night chat show has been pulled during his suspension. The corporation may try hard to keep one of their biggest stars, but with complaints now up to 30,000, there will almost certainly be more casualties. Nina Nanar, ITV News. Well, Geraint Vincent is at the BBC Trust HQ in central London. So, Geraint, what action could the Trust take now? Well, Romley, I understand that just in the last few minutes that meeting that the Trust is holding has now ended. We're expecting a statement later today. Now, in terms of the decision they've made, well, they might decide to bow to the media clamour and sack Jonathan Ross. Uh, that would be an extremely uh, big decision, firstly because he is such a huge star and such a big ratings winner, but also because they might find grounds for dismissal actually quite difficult to find. And that is because, however offensive those remarks that Jonathan Ross made were, this was a recorded uh, programme and the decision to broadcast the programme was nothing to do with Jonathan Ross. Now, while the, the meeting may have found it relatively easy to identify and decide to take action against the member of the management team or the production team that cleared that programme for air, what they're going to do with Jonathan Ross is an altogether thornier and more difficult question. And I would guess that was why uh, this meeting went on for so long this morning. OK, Geraint, thank you. Good evening, and we begin with some breaking news as we come on air tonight. The BBC's highest paid presenter, Jonathan Ross, has been suspended without pay for 12 weeks for his part in the prank phone calls made to the actor Andrew Sachs. One of the BBC's most senior managers has resigned over the scandal. The controller of Radio 2, Leslie Douglas, has paid the price for the now notorious pre-recorded broadcast by Ross and Russell Brand. Just a short time ago, Ms Douglas released a statement saying the last week has 
been a painful one for the BBC and particularly for BBC Radio 2. Uh, it is with enormous regret that I have decided to resign as controller of BBC Radio 2. The events of the last two weeks happened on my watch. I believe it is right that I take responsibility for what has happened. Nina Nana reports. He had been locked in a meeting for hours, but a short while ago the BBC's Director General emerged to reveal decisions had been taken. Um, this morning uh, I met with the Editorial Standards Committee of the BBC Trust. Uh, I presented an interim report on the events surrounding the Russell Brand Show. Uh, I also had some uh, proposals for management action to make. And the management itself has acted. Tonight, Leslie Douglas, the controller of Radio 2, the network which transmitted the offending calls, has resigned following in the footsteps of Brand himself. In a letter to Mark Thompson, she said she believed it was right that she take responsibility for what has happened and also offered a personal apology to Andrew Sachs, his family and the audience. With the number of complaints rising to more than 30,000, today's meeting was crucial. It was down to Director General Mark Thompson to brief the BBC Trust on the investigation into how the calls came to be broadcast. Chairing the meeting was Richard Tate, former editor-in-chief at ITN. Also listening to the findings via video link was Sir Michael Lyons, chairman of the Trust. We have to believe that the BBC is peopled by, you know, he's organised, he's a sort of organisation, because we own it, they keep telling us we own it, it is a kind of mega reflection of ourselves. That's why this story is as big as it is. Now, some people have said that perhaps we were insensitive to Manuel actor Andrew Sachs' appeal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In order for the calls to Andrew Sachs to be broadcast, the production team will have had to refer up to more senior managers because of the lewd nature of their content. It's thought the office of the controller of Radio 2 was also alerted last week about the matter, but didn't act. Leslie Douglas's loss is, however, a big blow to the BBC. She is credited with transforming Radio 2, bringing in award-winning star names like Brand and Chris Evans. Some say her loss could be damaging to the station's profile. She's done a, a remarkable job taking over from Jim Moyer, who re-engineered what was a very boring, old-fashioned brand and made it vital, ironically, with some of these people, like Jonathan Ross and the Chris Evanses and the Russell Brands. If they're not going to be able to employ those sort of people, if auntie is auntie, then you're going to not attract some of the best talent to appeal to a younger audience and you've got to actually understand what is your audience. BBC News at 6 o'clock. Good evening, this is Fran Godfrey. The controller of Radio 2, Leslie Douglas, has resigned. <laughs> Once more, the BBC is leading its own bulletins on its internal troubles. Jonathan Ross' suspension, meanwhile, will remain in force for 12 weeks and he will not receive any pay. The BBC Trust has said that the matters are still being investigated and the BBC itself will apologise on air to licence fee payers. Nina Nanar, ITV News. Well, Garrett Vincent is at the BBC Trust headquarters tonight. Garrett, this story is changing all the time as we come on air. What more can you tell us about Jonathan Ross's suspension? Well, his behaviour described by the BBC tonight, his behaviour uh, on that broadcast, what, 10, 11 days ago, ago now, described as completely unacceptable. The director said it cannot be allowed to go uncensored or to go without sanction. Suspended, as Nina said there, uh, without pay for 12 weeks. But I think what's happening here... It's not quite a sacking, is it? It's almost a, a, a compromise, a suspension for 12 weeks without, without pay. And I think that reflects uh, disagreement right at the very top of the BBC about what to do with Jonathan Ross and how to resolve the situation, whether or not to fully uh, sack him. And I think that the, the disagreement and the dilemma is because if you sack him, well... That's difficult. Yes, he did say these dreadful things, but it was a recorded programme. He is not responsible uh, for that broadcast. Uh, the responsibility for the broadcast uh, was Leslie Douglas's, and that's why uh, she has resigned tonight. There will be those at the very top of the BBC who want to keep on Jonathan Ross. He is, of course, a huge uh, ratings winner, but the question there is, how do you possibly reintegrate this, reintegrate this huge star uh, into programming in the face of such... Uh, Public outrage, so disagreement and disarray, I think, as well. We've got diff different statements coming out from different parts of the BBC at the same time tonight. All right, Garen Vincent at BBC Trust headquarters. Thank you. And any more on that during this programme? And